Okay, so we've been talking about letters and specifically dealing with words. In the last video, we talked about how words work. That is, in everyday language, how do we uh, use words? And we, we, we said three things about words. Um, first, that words mean whatever we make them mean. Uh, words don't have definitions. They have a semantic range or uh, a list of common uses. And uh, finally, that the author or speaker uses assumes that you have enough information to understand what he or she means. Now, we said that's important because we're not the original audience. So while Paul knew that the Corinthians, or assumed that the Corinthians would understand what he meant when he used a certain word because they shared a common uh, historical cultural background or because of the information in the letter. We ourselves, 20, uh, you know, 2100 years or 2000 years later, we don't know, uh, we don't share the same cultural historical background. So we don't have the information Paul assumed his readers had because we weren't his original intended readers. Anyway, uh, if you don't know what these three things mean, that means you gotta go and watch the other video. And if you did and you still don't know, then I suck as a teacher and I'm sorry. But assuming you do understand what those three things mean, we can now develop a philosophy of how to do a word study. Now, I'm gonna suggest uh, a few steps here. The first step is, I've been preaching this the entire time is uh, you got to look at the larger context and that's the big picture we've talked about that for, for you know the first six videos is the purpose of the uh, of the author in the whole letter why did Paul write first Corinthians why did John write first John or the uh, or whatever pick your author of a letter what is he trying to accomplish with that letter second is you got to be familiar with the content. You got to know what the author says at different points of the letter so that you can draw from that information. And finally, you you have to understand the flow of thought of the argument or description or whatever it is the author is doing. Know how the individual parts of that letter contribute to accomplishing the purpose that the author has. So uh, that's the larger context. That's going to be the most important and relevant information as far as interpreting uh, or doing a word study. Now, the next thing is when we take a look at the, let, the word itself, is we have to determine the range of, the semantic range of a, of a word. Excuse me. Uh, you can do that by looking it up in a lexicon or a, a Greek dictionary is what that is. Um, if you bring up a lexicon, it'll give you the different uses of that word, and, and that's really what we want to know. It's how is this word typically used. Uh, you, you can do that. Another way of doing that, or an additional way of doing that, which I'm going to, we'll go through these steps later on in the video, is you can examine how that word is used, you know, look, look it up in a concordance or using Bible software. Uh, look how that same author uses it in that passage. So if that word occurs in that same passage, see what he means in that same passage. If if it's used throughout the whole letter, which it probably is, look how that author uses that throughout the whole letter. And then finally ask yourself the question, how do how does that same author use that in all of his letters? So if we're looking at how Paul uses a specific word, first concentrate on how that word is used in the passage, then in in first in the entire letter first Corinthians and then how does Paul use it in all of his writing? Uh, once you've done that, then you can consider how all of the authors in the New Testament use that word. What do they mean when they use it? Finally, you can look at the entire Bible. Um, obviously, the Old Testament was written in a different language, but sometimes um, the Greek translation of the Old Testament will come in handy. And then you've got all of the writings. So you can, if you if you're studying in Greek, uh, you can you can look at how Philo, um, how uh, Josephus, and other writers use that same word. So that what we're doing here is essentially trying to figure out how that word is typically used, what's its most common usage, uh, what's its least common usage, and uh, and trying to get an idea of what 
is most likely just by sheer numbers what the author is communicating. And then you take all those options and you weigh them. You, you ask yourself, what is most likely the author doing here? Uh, by looking at the, and you weigh it by comparing it to the, the larger context, the purpose, the content, the flow of thought, um, the content within that sentence and within that passage. And, and then you weigh that to the common usage of that, of that word. Uh, then you ask yourself, okay, here are two or three really good possibilities of what the author is, is meaning by this word. Carefully think out the implications that using each word has. So, for example, if 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 one word mean could mean, um, and, w and the example I'm going to use uh, when we actually work through one of these is the word destruction. The word destruction, for example, could mean uh, to lose, um, to like lose, like forget uh, where where something is. Uh, it could mean to destroy something, like annihilate. Uh, it could it could also mean to to ruin or corrupt, or even um, to morally corrupt. So th you've got all these different options, and so you ask yourself, okay, uh, let's say I like the idea of morally corrupt or totally destroy. That could be one of the things that Paul means here. Is ask yourself, wh how does that impact our understanding of this text, or maybe a theological concept? And then ask yourself, what is most likely uh, out of these options? Uh, the last thing I'm going to suggest is that you consult knowledgeable resources. Now, this could be your pastor. Um, this could be a friend. But notice I said knowledgeable. Um, you know, if, if you've got a buddy who maybe isn't necessarily uh, very knowledgeable in, in, in a specific book, then you're going to not appreciate his contributions as much. Uh, you know who is knowledgeable? Our commentators. This is a, a big push for commentaries. I'm going to suggest you go and spend some time in a, in a seminary library. Look at all the uh, commentaries and see what how they all understand it. The other thing you could do is look at different translations. Um, ob obviously translators are very careful when they choose which word they're going to use in English. And so take a look at five to ten different translations and and look at how those translations deal with them and then if if you do have like a like a college professor um, if you're at a bible college or seminary seminary guy or 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 uh, or a knowledgeable pastor you can talk to them as well sometimes if if i've got a really crazy idea i'll i'll throw it to one of my friends and uh, you know who's who's a mature christian and maybe not knowledgeable translator or teacher or anything, but I'll, I'll take a, a good, you know, sound-minded, reasonable Christian, and I'll just say, hey, what do you think about this? And uh, and, and sometimes that's really helpful, and, uh, and you take it with a grain of salt, but it's a good way of catching when you're just totally off the deep end. So anyway, here's, here's the basic idea of a word study, is you look at the larger context first, the purpose, content, and flow of thought of the entire letter. Then you want to know how is that word typically used. Uh, you're going to look it up in a lexicon. A lexicon will give you a list of typical usage. The other thing is uh, you can go and look yourself in in that same passage, in that in in the letters by the same author, or in all the letters by that same author, uh, as well as how the entire New Testament, the Bible, and other other Greek authors use that word, and then come up with a list of common usage for that word and then weigh the options taking into consideration the larger context the the, the passage itself um, and then come up with what you think are some uh, are the best options and then think out the implications of, of of choosing between those various options how does it impact the text as well as um, maybe a theological uh, concept and, if, and then maybe not finally, but throughout the process, you want to be consulting knowledgeable resources, commentaries, translations, uh, and knowledgeable buddies that you have. So uh, in the next video, we'll actually work through, um, through an example from 1 Corinthians.